Hi, I'm Brian Aldis. I'm age 16 and started racing when I was 11. I've had two chairs of Get Kids Going. Hi, my name is Stephen and I'm 13 years old. I've been playing sports for about six, seven years now, such as basketball, tennis, cricket, rugby and golf and a whole lot more. I've spent most of my time playing and entering competitions. Today, I'm off to Coventry Country Club. This is the first chair that um, Get Kids Going bought and it's a tennis chair and Cliff Richard presented it to me. Hi, I'm David Green. I'm 23 years old. I live in Surrey. And I'm the London Marathon winner for 2002. My everyday chair, the one I'm sitting in now, the wheels are very straight, um, so you can fit through doorways. My tennis chair is slightly higher, um, the, but the main difference is the, the back wheels. They're actually out at a camber. I've actually got 24 degrees camber on this. The things I need for racing is gloves to help you push and protect your hands, helmet and the racing wheelchair, special racing wheelchair. Oh, come on! That's a great shot of Rossi. <laughs> The elbow first, oh. my hand. Okay. So not the elbow first. Oh. Don't get stuck. Don't get stuck. Look at my arm. Okay. Yeah. Now what you've got is now the ball is is now right in the position but it wasn't before. Why is it better than this to have a racing chair than a normal wheelchair? Because it's it's a lot lighter and you can get more of a rhythm going. Because you you it's kind of like airstream. You're, you're leaning forward and you can push. Back. Are you getting a new racing chair? Yeah, get kids going. Uh, um, actually making it at the moment. Um, my name is Anthony Hughes. I'm the National Performance Manager for the Federation of Disability Sport here in Wales. Um, I work as part of the um, Great Britain Athletics Group, um, mostly with senior amputees and uh, spinal injury throwers. Good lad. Good lad. Good lad. Okay, should be... Yes, exactly. Okay, and again. Let's see if you can slap like... Right yes. Well, this is my trophy for the London Marathon for winning it. Um, I've entered it three years in a row. Uh, I was fourth, third, and then first this year. This is a reach back. It helps you conserve energy over long distances. This is an elbow lift. They're great for short distances, and I hate them. It's like that straight away. But I can't. This is where I'm pushing, and you should push more on here for the techniques. And you push like that. I, I sat in that green one there, and then he um, measured my size on, on my legs, and he just measured my arm width. And made this chair. It's funky. It's got pink wheels as well. You, you have to keep the shot into your neck. You have to pull it back, explode out. Oh. Yeah, it is quite hard. Isn't it? Good lad. You really good lad. Now. Bang. Okay. Well, look at that. Good lad. Good lad.
Get Kicks Going was started in 1997, um, in June 1997. It was started because we realised that there wasn't another charity like Get Kicks Going. Unbelievable, one would say, considering there's thousands of charities in the UK that do fantastic and valuable work. But we realised Get Kids Going was unique from the start. We provide sports wheelchairs um, for youngsters, children and youngsters up to the age of 26. We always retain the ownership of the chair so that everybody's valuable donations, whether they're companies, individuals or whoever, know that once they've given that donation or if they continue to support us, that that money or that chair will be passed on to other youngsters to encourage them to do disability sport. On top of that, we also provide them with sports grants. So many disabled youngsters can actually rest assured that they've got a continuous year-on-year -year support from the charity, which is very, very important, very valuable to them. Because if we didn't do that, then they wouldn't be able to do the sport. Hi, I'm Brian Aldis. I'm age 16 and started racing when I was 11. I've had two chairs of Get Kids Going. The things I need for racing is gloves to help you push and protect your hands, helmet and the racing wheelchair, special racing wheelchair. This is a reach back, it helps you conserve energy over long distances. This is an elbow lift, they're great for short distances and I hate them. It's like that straight away, but I can't. This is where I'm pushing and you should push more on here for the techniques. And you push like that. I done my first 10 cap in Woodall Spa in Lincolnshire and the weather wasn't too good but I enjoyed it because it was my first level one. This year I did the Great North Mini Marathon. It was 1500 metres and I done it in 4 minutes 19 winning the race. I did London Mini Marathon this year and I won it this year and I did it in 9 minutes 14 and I was really pleased with it because I beat my main rival. In 2006 I'd like to represent Wales for the Commonwealth Games because I'd like to represent Wales because my family's Welsh. Also in 2008 I'd like to go to Beijing, China to do the Paralympics. A sports wheelchair can cost anything up to, if not beyond, £3,000 for a sports chair. On top of that, on average, you would be probably talking of a grant of at least five to 10000 per year given out to most youngsters to keep them doing that sport or to enable them to do it. They spend it on things like spare tyres, spare wheels, zip wheels, which are basically anim 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 uh, aluminium wheels. Um, they spend it on travel to sporting events, competition fees, gym fees, training fees, anything and everything that will help them to, to continue to do that sport. Hi, my name is Stephen and I'm 13 years old. I've been playing sports for about six, seven years now, such as basketball, tennis, cricket, rugby and golf and a whole lot more. I spend most of my time playing and entering competitions. Today I'm off to Coventry Country Club. Dick is going they gave me my first sports chair which is how I won this medal. This, that trophy rather, this medal. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. And this. To play any sport, you need a specially designed chair. I've got a couple of chairs, an everyday chair and a sports chair. Get kids going.
they got me my first ever sports chair, which I'm still using today from about three years ago. No, can you slip it in the watch? Stick it in and I'll push the button. No, wrong one. The sports chair, hell of a lot faster. It takes skill and, well, if you get wrong, well, you're in trouble. Because you gotta, you got to know what you're doing. Front wheel, so Hold you on. don't tip forwards. The two slanted wheels, so you can turn quick and shift, like this. This is the Get Kids Going medal. I'll put it on, because it weighs a ton. And I got this... May time this year, roughly May this year, for a golf day. It was a golfing day and I happened to play on the putting greens, but they all suck. <laughs> but golf, I play golf, but it's I'm not really any good. Just between you and me. Um, oh, come on. <laughs> well, that's how to chip. Come on! Damn, too short. Must have been about 50. What's that? Come on! Get down! Get down, Stephen. It's got angry to that. Yee-hee! Yeah. Apart from the fact that Dick is going to give me my first sports chair and lots of medals, they've also given me friendship. Opportunities to meet uh, celebrities good, such as Gary Lineker, Paul Daniels, John Fergo, the list goes on and on and on. And I've just basically, since I've started getting my, using my sports chair and when I first got it, well, it's helped me get this. Oops. <laughs> That's a great shot as well, Steve. <laughs> These wheelchairs are used for them to play all sorts of different sports, participate in different sports like marathons, basketball, tennis, rugby, mountain skiing, um, athletics, uh, snooker, you'll name it, they'll do it. Now each wheelchair is built like a Formula One racing car. They go like a Formula One racing car and they're built around the athlete. So each one is built to specific design and size for that youngster. My everyday chair, the one I'm sitting in now, the wheels are very straight um, so you can fit through doorways. My tennis chair is slightly higher um, the, but the main difference is the, the back wheels are actually out of the camber. I've actually got 24 degrees camber on this. Um, the front wheels, there's not much difference. It's just that, and then also I've got various straps that I use to hold my waist, my knees, and my foot into place. Um, I've also got an extra little bit here that sticks out that um, I use to keep my leg in place. Um, and then this chair that I've actually been working on for the last year and a half, on the back wheel, I've, got, I've actually got a back wheel on to stop me tipping out. But also, I've incorporated um, a spring on, onto this as well. So um, it actually helps me when I'm leaning back for a serve or when a ball's hit at you, I can actually lean on the back wheel and tip the chair out of the way slightly. Um, but it's a, it's a great chair and it's, it's taken... I had a prototype of the chair that I had for about six months and we, and we came up with two or three new ideas. Um, the spokes, for example, are really light, it makes the wheels really light as well. Um, and this is the finished article, I've been playing this in, in, in this chair now for about a year, and it's pretty much uh, as I want it now. It's a very, very good chair.
This is the first chair that um, Get Kids Going bought, and it, it's a tennis chair, and Cliff Richard presented it to me. These two are for tennis, where this one I, in the junior singles, I came runner-up, and this was in the doubles, I also came runner-up. What are you doing next season in tennis? Well, um, I'm not sure yet, but I'm hoping to enter a lot more tournaments and hopefully get some medals. Is it your favourite sport? Yeah, but I also enjoy racing. Why is it better, Louise, to have a racing chair than a normal wheelchair? Because it's, it's a lot lighter and you can get more of a rhythm going. Because you, you, it's kind of like airstream, you're, you're leaning forward and you can push properly. Are you getting a new racing chair? Yeah, get kids going, uh, um, actually making it at the moment. <laughs> The wheelchairs, I'm pleased to say, are mainly British made, built by British companies. We're a great believer in British kids, British companies. Um, so all the money that we have from, from all our wonderful donors gets ploughed back into Britain and into basically helping youngsters to become Paralympic champions, just like our Vice President Tanny Gray, who always has um, a great interest in the charity. Um, many of the youngsters need specialist equipment, like I've just mentioned. So we have to go to the best manufacturers and suppliers. One of those is draft wheelchairs, which we get many, many racing chairs from. Others are RGK who do basketball chairs. Others are general sports chairs. Um, so we actually have a mixture, but draft is a big supplier and a big supporter of Get Kids Going, as are many of the others. So, yeah, we're very pleased to work with Draft, who actually give us a lot of advice and do a lot for Get Kids Going in that sense. Hi Louise. How are you? Fine, thanks. Looking good? Barry, what's your connection with Get Kids Going? How's Get Kids Going? Yeah, uh, we first got in touch with Get Kids Going it's probably about three to four years ago when they set up. Um, and Jane got in contact with me because she'd heard we'd sold wheelchairs and asked if we'd like to supply their kids with the chairs that the kids wanted. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, look at that. 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 Look at Look at that! See, that's how you sit in one. She told you it's a nice pair of glasses. Oh, look! I get to keep laughing. 
<laughs> That's nice. Oh my god, this is so nicer than my other one. No thanks. What one? Cool. I've just realised why that's so that that's nice. where you sit on there and your legs yeah, are in there. Yeah, I, I tried it. I've not seen that. I, I sat in that green <coughs> one there and then um, he um, measured my size on, yeah. on my legs well, and he just measured my arm length. And, and the made this chair. Yeah. It's funky. Yeah, it's got pink wheels as well. What we've done, we've actually designed the frame so that the, the camber bar, which is normally straight here, bends outwards to give Louise the exact position where the feet wanted to go. When Louise came in for the first assessment, I noticed that with a straight camber bar we couldn't get the feet resting in the right place. So we've designed it so that it takes the camber bar out of the way so we can actually place the feet where, where they need to go, which then makes Louise much more comfortable in the chair and in a much more efficient position. You've got a book in the package, it comes with it. Nice. If you want to do an emergency stop, what you do is you lean forward and grab the two rear wheels. Right. Sort of up here more. That's it, like that. We've designed that so that if you do decide to go to the foot plate, you've got the room here to drop your legs in. That's why we've opened this up a little bit. Get Kids Going was founded on the start of the New York Marathon five years ago and we've built the team up since then and over that five years Get Kids Going now has the biggest charity team in the world to run the New York Marathon. We go out usually in November, the race is in November and we go to register uh, which is usually a couple of days before the race where over 35,000 runners from all over the world go to registration including all the runners from Get Kids Going. We go and register because you have to pick up a running chip which times you all the way around the course. You have to make sure that you are that runner and you have to make sure that you know all about what to do on race day. It's very important. That's usually on the um, Friday. We have the Get Kids Going party which brings all the team together so that they all bond and they know where and where they're staying, what they're doing, who the runners are. They all meet each other. It's a fantastic event. Everybody loves it. We always tell them how important it is for them to run for Get Kids Going and what the charity is all about. Bring your left shoulders to the camera so you can sort of dovetail in there. Go in a little bit more. I need a wider lens. <laughs> the people on the chairs, if you move close together, maybe you get one more person on those chairs. Closer together. That's it. That's the left. And if you boss, I bring your right shoulders to the camera and then move closer together. And Barry can just stay like that. It's in there. Turn, turn, turn. One, two. That's great. Double check the focus. On <laughs> three. One, two. We're going to do like four more of these. going to finish up the roll. Okay. One, two. Keep smiling. Keep smiling. <laughs> Thank you. Getting cramps in your legs? One, two. Are we okay? <laughs> Hi, I'm David Green. I'm 23 years old. I live in Surrey. And I'm the London Marathon winner for 2002. We're at um, Kingston, Kings Meadow Athletics Track and I train here about three times a week. Uh, the training session was um, endurance and stamina work well, because it's winter so you don't really want to do sprints or you just want to get your strength up. You need to build your power up during the winter, especially me because I'm a, a sprinter really. Right. So you, you need to, to build your power up in the gym plus doing stamina and endurance work. So do you do weights training as well? Yeah, I do weights training um, twice a week at the moment. Are you knackered? Yeah, I'm knackered today. <laughs> well, this is my trophy for the London Marathon, for winning it. Um, I've entered it three years in a row. Uh, I was fourth, third and then first this year. So uh, it's pretty good. 
and I've got the third fastest time ever for London. So, what's your time? Uh, one hour, 39 minutes and 44 seconds. So How did you feel when you won it? Over the moon. Just, uh, from a young age, I just always wanted to win London Marathon. From seeing wheelchair athletes doing it and uh, me training when I was younger because I won the mini marathon uh, about seven times. So uh, that was my aim. Well, it's, uh, it was tough. It was a perfect day for, the, for a marathon. No wind, it wasn't cold. Uh, I really went for it about 12 miles. Um, there was an accident, someone crashed, it was in front of me. So I um, made a break from there, but I didn't think I'd last another 12 miles on my own. So it was a learning curve, really. What keeps you training, coming out on a cold night like tonight? Just to get better, to improve. Just thinking of, um, in years to come, like the Olympics, gold medals, and the aim to be world's best. That's my aim. So what got you involved with getting kids going? Um, was it the chair? Yeah, chair, wheels, um, travel expenses. It's really travel expenses. Um, they help me because I'm travelling all over the world, so it's quite, it's quite tough paying for, your, for yourself. So. Is it a beneficial relationship for you as an athlete? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Definitely. It works both ways? Both ways, yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. <laughs> Do you think it's becoming more accessible for disabled children? to do sport? Yeah, it's getting a lot better. Um, the main, because a lot of disabled kids are going to mainstream schools, it's, um, at first they weren't getting enough information about the sports, and the mainstream schools didn't know much about dis disability sports, but now they're getting all the information, there's a lot lot more coming through. So and do you think charities like Get Kids Going are helping? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. In what way? Um, supporting them, like buying them chairs and that, because it's, it's, it's expensive. It's not like buying a pair of running shoes. And so it, people like get kids going is to help them get a, a chair and stuff, get some going, and they enjoy it more. On the Saturday we do the friendship run, all the team get together. And I'm pleased to say this year Get Kids Going was chosen as the charity to represent Great Britain by holding the Union Jack at the beginning of the race. And the Friendship Run starts at the UN building and it's um, started by Kofi Annan, who's the head of the United Nations. All, all the countries in the world gather together at the UN and they all run under the flag of their nation. With our team and Get Kids Going, it's, it's a double-edged sword because not only we, are we running for Britain, but we're also running for the charity, which is set up to help many, many disabled children and youngsters participate in wheelchair sport. My name is Anthony Hughes, I'm the National Performance Manager for the Federation of Disability Sport here in Wales. Um, I work as part of the um, Great Britain Athletics Group, um, mostly with senior amputees and uh, spinal injury throwers. Um, Samuel Scott, although a young man, is on our talent identification scheme. Uh, we have several youngsters who uh, are deemed as extremely talented and that's measured by their performance, whether it be in swimming, in athletics, in powerlifting, horse riding. Um, and what we're trying to do is to try and create this academy of young talent. Right, fast arm. Oh, sorry. Okay, off the top of the hand, you really reach it forward. Think about it. You're staying under pressure, you've got to think. Think, think, think. Good. Okay. Right. Met Samuel um, back in Wrexham. In fact, I actually got a phone call from his mother. Um, I was on my way out to America with um, the GB team, and uh, we had loads of problems with kit not fitting. So, um, in my former profession, I was teaching, and I was head of a fabrics department, textile department. So, coming from a tailoring background, and I taught. Then I was head of the department. 
um, I ended up having the kit sent to college and um, I was altering it all so it fitted. So we were in a particularly high pressured moment. We had two days before we flew and none of the kit fitted. So um, when Sandra rung and said, you know, she'd been to a junior games and somebody spotted her son and recommended that he come to me. Um, I was sympathetic and wanted to help, but thought like, ring me when I get back from America. Good lad. Good lad. So you should be, yes, exactly. Okay, and again, let's see if you can slap my wrist. Okay, yes, exactly, and again, come on, chop it right through. Yes, and again, come on, powerful movement. So I have to see how, see how that's quickly opening up the chest. So if you use that, that's an extra half a meter, just by swinging the arm out. It's a fantastic, that is really hard. Do that one again now. Get your seat in position. So I do the whole drill now, but swing. Mm. That was shot put. Okay. How does it take to learn that technique? Um, about just it's about two years probably. You you have to keep the shot into your neck. You have to pull back, and explode out. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is quite hard. Yeah. Same thing again. Nice big big throw. Down low, high explosion. Explode. <laughs> Brilliant. Even better. Even better. Okay. Okay, so we'll try the same thing again. But this time really reach out for it. Good lad. Good lad. I um got got Anthony in Wrexham in I think it was two thousand. Spotted him then at a games in Wrexham, it was an international um, open championships and there was a junior section where he could come and join in and he was there and I actually spotted him moving around and he was trying to climb a set of stairs in his chair. So I just thought he's rather very, very stupid or very, very stubborn and um, I thought so straight away I learned that he was very intelligent but he was very stubborn and he was determined to do things and not let him get in his way. Really, really give me some power. Good lad. He really good lad of power. Bang! Okay. Well, look at that. Yeah. Javelin's my favourite, I think. What's your worst one? Did you um, hate the most? Probably the 200. Try and bring your elbow to my hand. Your elbow. Your elbow first to my hand. Okay. No, not your elbow first. Go against that. Go against that. Look at my arm. There. Now, what you've got is now, the ball is, is now, right, in the position, but it wasn't before, it was over here before. <coughs> Right? That there is the strongest part of the throw. What it have got is a good range for the start you have, okay? That's really good. Take it on back a minute now. Right. So we're going to be careful of, okay? So it's very, this is very, very important. See that there now? Now what will happen if he goes back and he keeps jarring his elbow, that's going to hurt him. Now what have got there is a good platform for the javelin. But believe it or not, some can't do that. Now what I should look for is whether you can get the javelin stay up as well. So it's just turned a little bit in, right? And then it comes this comes first here. Power position. Sam, so what was that like? Some good advice there, yeah? Yeah that was What was yeah. he talking about? He was um talking about exercises to um exercise my um arms with the javelin. And I've just gotta get a D ball in there, one K medi ball now. So What's a D ball? It's um kind of like three quarters of a ball with a sort of semi-circle ring on it. When did you get this chair, Sam? Um, it was last year. No, this early year, this, year. Early this year. Who did you get it off? Um, Jay, um, get Kids Going, Jane Emerson. So when did you first meet Get Kids Going? It was, I went to a primary sports camp in Stoke Mandeville and I met Jane there and she got me the chair in a matter of weeks. Come on, drive, drive, Has it been good to have you chair? Yes, it was. Why? Because um, the old chair I used it, that I first had was just like really slow and you couldn't push it or anything. It's really horrible, really. Do you feel better in this chair? Yeah, it's much better. Yeah. Were, you, were you involved in the London Marathon? Yeah, I was, yeah. Yes, I did, yeah. How did you go? Is that the mini marathon? Um, yeah, I did it in 2000. I came first out of the ones in the in the day chairs. I did it in my day chair. Really? Yeah, I had a in my old day chair, and 
this year I came third in junior boys. I um, but I got boxing at the start and I hit the guy in front of me and everybody went in front of me. Mm, yeah. A bit nasty. Yeah, well, now it's just like bashed into the front of some because I didn't get a good start. Right. And everybody went past me and I couldn't catch up with them. So. <laughs> will you do it again? Are you going to yeah, do it next well, year? Yes, I will. Yes, I am, yeah. yeah. Unless I'm in Portugal. Race day for many competitors is terribly, terribly exciting because they've trained for probably four or five months for it um, and they've really not just trained themselves physically but mentally they've trained themselves for that race. Having run two New York marathons for the charity now, I really now do understand what marathon running is all about and to be a runner. He, to run a marathon and to, to be someone who trains for a marathon, you have to be very special. You have to have real, real dedication, but also you have to have really a focus. But the key, I think, is to do it for a team and to do it for some, somebody else, something else other than yourself, because you put more into it and you get more out of it. Um, and that's why I think Many runners are attracted to get kids going and to run marathons because they actually know that the charity gives the money back into sport and especially into disability sport. So for them to train for that big day in their life is something amazing. On marathon morning, um, we go out to the start very, very early, around about five or six o'clock. We all go and have breakfast there, we all get together, we all prepare ourselves, there's all sorts of things going on at the start. You even get a palm reader, <coughs> who might read your palm at the start, to tell you how you're going to feel at mile 18, or what you're going to do at mile 13. But I could tell you now, that there's so many people there, they, 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 they come along, they do interviews with you, they actually uh, <coughs> do warm-ups, they've got music, people get married at the start. We have really, they have religious services, everything you can imagine, everybody's doing at that start. We're usually out there for about four or five hours to prepare. Then around 11 o'clock, that's the start. This is Lathan Day now, and uh, we're just at about mile 17. We're gonna be setting up the banners and the flags and wait for all everyone from Get Kids Going to come past. Quite a nice day, a bit cold, but I think we're all warm at the moment, so I hope everyone else will be. Now, the New York start is the most dramatic start in the world. It runs across the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which is two miles long and about half a mile high. It's got three tiers to this bridge and you've got 35,000 runners on that bridge at any one time. The whole bridge sways to runners. Um, I remember last year, which was quite amazing, um, after September, um, the problems they had in September, that um, they played a, a tune. And I just sat there and uh, we were sitting there wondering what they were going to play. And guess what they played? They played. Frank Sinatra, New York, New York. And it was just brilliant, I can believe it. And we all set off and we were just on so much of a high that it carried us around that course. And I, I would estimate, I, I know for certainty, there are over probably three to four million supporters on that, on that route. And it all starts from the very Zalmo Bridge. What happens here at this point? We just stand and we support them when they come through to our horse. And blue in the face. No, no, we, we uh, cheer them on, that's what it is. They roughly all know that there's a place about here. That's why the flags go up, that's why the banner goes up. I love New York! People, once they find out what Get Kids Going is, is about, they become ignited and they become um, really, really terribly interested in us for many, many years. And we have lots and lots of people who we never really envisaged would really come and do more. But actually, once they've met the kids and found out how, what amazing difference and how, what an effect it has on them, has on the, on the kids, then they just come back for more. And then they love it. 
Simple as that, really. Hi, my name's Kelly Dixon and I live in Bedfont in Middlesex. Um, I'm a dancing teacher, I've got my own dancing school. I teach children from the age of two and a half up to 18 and also adults as well. It's shattered, just arrived in New York and a city that doesn't sleep, having a great time. Um, Get Kids Going Charity is someone that we've uh, been supporting for the last four years and this year being the fifth. I think it's quite a good charity. They, they raise money for the children that want to um, participate in sport um, to get new wheelchairs, wheelchairs for them as well. We've seen lots of the children at the London Marathon and it's quite nice to sort of be involved in the charity and get to know the children and exactly what, um, what we're raising the money for. My name's Darren Somerville. I'm a hairdresser. Uh, I hope to do about uh, four hours 20 and I've raised about 1,500 to 2,000 pounds. Okay, I'm Lucy, I live in Manchester, I'm an interior designer and I'm running the marathon because I wanted a challenge this year. And my connection to get kids going, I just pulled the charity out of Runner's World and spoke to Jane and she inspired me, so that's why I'm running for them. Hi, I'm Mark, I'm the uh, official personal trainer for, for Get Kids Going, uh, here with a team of runners. Uh, we've got 330 running this year. Um, we offer a free training advice hotline for all the runners. Any injury problems they have or training advice that they need, they ring us up, we give them all the help they want. My name is Amanda and I'm a training accountant and I'm running for Get Kids Going because it offered a really good package to get to New York, <laughs> raise a thousand pounds and you can come and see this wonderful city. But also because New York Marathon is like one of the biggest and the best to do and uh, really looking forward to it. Hi, my name's John Richards, I'm 34 years old. Uh, I work for a consulting company, ATOS KPMG in London. Uh, come over to New York to run the marathon for Get Kids Going. I um, haven't run a marathon before, it's my first one. I hope to do it in uh, under four hours. I'm raising about £1,600 for the charity. If I do under 330 I'll raise a bit more. Some performance related benefits in there from some people who are sponsoring me. Um, but ultimately just hope to finish and looking forward to it. And a bit nervous actually today as well. Hi, I'm Colin. Colin Miranda, I'm from Southend. Uh, I'm here to run in the marathon. My uh, time hopefully will be about four hours, 20 minutes. We've uh, raised at least 3,000, hoping to do some more from that when we get back and prove that we've done it. And uh, just looking forward to it. Um, I'm from Scotland. I chose this uh, charity through my friend who asked me to do it. Um, I like to run and I love to raise money for a good charity. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name's Mark. I'm from London. Um, this is my third time in New York, the New York Marathon. I got involved in the charity three years ago through an advertisement in a magazine. Um, took up the challenge and never looked back. I basically love running. I've got two kids who are three and four, so hopefully they'll be able to see me on the telly and be proud of me. I haven't done a marathon before, but my predicted time is going to be three hours, kind of four hours. So I'm really looking forward to doing it with uh, all the other guys here. Hi, I'm Jackie, Jackie Dixon. I work at British Airways for passenger services. I've um, run three marathons here in New York. New York is a fantastic venue. To run for this charity, I feel very passionate about. For the children who want to do sport, we raise money to buy them wheelchairs, which they desperately need to help them to maintain their fitness to be able to do sport. Hi, I'm David Reich. I live in North Yorkshire. I'm a doctor. I work in Middlesbrough. I think I've raised about £1,250 for Get Kids Going, which has been relatively easy. Training's been going alright, and I'm hoping to run three and a half hours. Um, my name's Alex Blair. I live in London. I work for the Times newspaper on the foreign desk. I'm Don Wakefield. This is where I go silent. <laughs> Marjorie's the experience. Once she's done the London Marathon, uh, we both started running five years ago and uh, um, we come from Farnham and uh, I'm retired. My name's uh, Simon Waldron, I work as an accountant for lastminute.com. Um, I'm over here, first marathon, always wanted to do a marathon. I um, thought New York would be good because it's uh, one of the largest and uh, wanted to do it for a great charity like Get Kids Going. So uh, looking forward to it and a bit nervous but hopefully it will go okay. Hello, I'm Jacqueline de Rojas. I, um, 
I'm a sales director for a software company in the UK. Um, I'm looking forward to doing it for, for Get Kids Going. It seems to be a great charity, great, great cause, and it's, it's exciting. There's a lot of excitement going on here, and uh, I'm really looking forward to doing it. Running for uh, this charity, Get Kids Going, is um, one of the loveliest causes I think um, marathon runners can run for because it gets kids going, gets kids out there doing things that you know otherwise wouldn't be possible. How are you feeling? Okay, no problem. They need every encouragement possible to do it. And that's why Get Kids Going was set up to do that. And they are fantastic. And the amazing amount of difference that it makes to a disabled youngster is fantastic in me because they would never do lots of things that they do now if we hadn't supported them um, initially. So all I can say is that the kids are fantastic, they're wonderful, and they're worth every penny that everybody ever gives to them.